In this video, we are going to start our new unit where uh, we'll begin with geometry congruence standard number six. We have three learning objectives for this unit. Our first learning objective is to identify the corresponding parts of a polygon when you're given a congruency statement. Secondly, identify corresponding parts given congruent figures. That's given the drawing. And our third will be to write a congruency statement when we are giving the drawing of congruent figures. So you'll note the vocabulary, corresponding angles, corresponding sides, corresponding parts. Corresponding has a very, very quick and easy understanding. Corresponding means matching. So corresponding parts are matching parts, angles or sides. Corresponding angles have to match angles. Corresponding sides have to match sides. And when you see this congruency statement, triangle ABC is congruent to triangle DOG, there is a very clear order to these. We have position 1, position 2, position 3, position 1, position 2, position 3. Well, if we want our corresponding angles, we're going to have three pairs of them position 1, position 2, and position 3. So we could say angle A in position 1 corresponds to angle D in position 1. Very quick way of identifying the matching pieces. Position 2 matches position 2. Position 3 matches or corresponds to position 3. And that quickly we have already identified our corresponding angles. It will take a little bit more work to get the corresponding sides. And I'm betting you notice I'm using an abbreviation. C-O-R-R -R is an abbreviation for corresponding. That way we don't have to write out the entire word every single time. It's just a way to save us a little bit of time. Well, Triangles had three angles. That's why we had angle one, angle two, angle three. But they also have three sides. So we need to identify the three pairs of corresponding sides. Fairly quick, we can go position one over to two, which is side length AB, will correspond to position one over to two for the other triangle. Well, just making sure we keep the same order. 1, 2. AB corresponds to DO. And we can continue that where we'll note, I'm putting the writing back up, 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 3. We can shift over <coughs> from 1, 2 to the next side length, 2, 3. 2, 3 has to match 2, 3, which gives us side length BC corresponding to side length OG. Which will bring us up to our third pair of corresponding sides. Now this is one that we started off 1, 2, then we shifted over 2, 3, now we'll shift over 3, 4. Except there is no 4. When you run out of letters Instead of going to one that doesn't exist, you just go back around to the beginning, which would give us position 1, 3, telling us that we have AC corresponding with 1, 3, DG. And there we go. We have our corresponding statements. Angles in blue, sides in red. Example 2 does the same piece. We will have three pairs of corresponding angles and three pairs of corresponding sides, which gives us a total of six corresponding parts. Just like last time, we'll say one, two, three, one, two, three, match them up. Angle 1 corresponds to angle 1. Angle 2 corresponds to angle 2. Angle 3 
corresponds to angle 3. And we have our three pairs of corresponding angles. I do need to pause here for a second and actually discuss something that is outside our standard and outside our learning objectives. But it is an important piece. It popped up. We should discuss it. We have angle R and angle R. This does not mean that they are the same angle R. These actually refer to two different angles. Even though we're using the same letter to reference them, they're different. Now, obviously, that should be a piece that jumps out and says, this is confusing. Why would we use the same letter for two different angles? Well, frankly, we shouldn't. But depending on how pictures get drawn, sometimes we're forced to do it even though we don't want to. In those instances, mathematicians have devised another way to reference angles, and it uses three letters. When we're looking at this angle, GRD, you notice how R is written in the middle of G and D? This would be a way of saying the letter in the middle is the vertex. We could actually call this angle GRD using three letters to reference it instead of only one. When we look at the other angle R, that would still need to be the vertex. But this time, the R is not written in the middle. Well, we could rewrite the pieces and put it in the middle, saying angle ART, using the still the same three letters, but just rewritten them into a different format. And in this instance, we can see angle GRD does not match up to angle ART because there are three different letters, even though the vertex where the angle folds is still at the same point R. For, this, for the rest of this video, when we encounter this point, when we are using the same letter to reference two different angles, I'm not going to go through and use the three-letter notation. That will be a topic for future down the road. But you should still be aware of it now. Now, to finish this one up, we still need to get the uh, three pairs of corresponding sides. So we'll go 1, 2 corresponds 1, 2. 2, 3 corresponds to 2, 3. And wrapping around, 3, 1, I'm sorry, 1, 3 corresponds with 1, 3. We have our three pairs of sides, three pairs of angles, all six pairs of corresponding parts. Skipping ahead to example number four. Same structure. Identify the corresponding sides and the corresponding angles. But this time, we don't have a triangle. Instead, we have a quadrilateral that has four angles and four sides. Well, since there are four angles, we will need four pairs. And since there are four sides, we will need four pairs of sides. Four angles, four sides, gives us a total of eight parts. Well, let's start listing them out. Position 1 corresponds to position 1. Position 2 corresponds position 2. Position 3 corresponds to position 3. Position 4 corresponds to position 4. We did run into the same part in number 3, where we have A corresponds with A. Those are different angles A. Even though we're not using the full three-letter way of writing them, we should keep in mind they are different. So, continuing. 1, 2 corresponds 1, 2 for our first side. 2, 3 3, 4 corresponds, corresponds, 
So UA, which is 2, 3, corresponds to 3. AR, which is 3, 4, corresponds 3, 4. And now we've run into the part again where R is a 4, there is no 5, so it will have to wrap back around to the beginning, which will let us use 1, 4 corresponding 1, 4. Those three examples are all for this one learning objective. Identify the corresponding parts when you are given a congruency statement. Our second learning objective is to do the exact same stuff, identify the corresponding parts, but we will be given the picture instead of the equivalent statement, instead of the congruence statement. So these are ones that look like this. We have a triangle, so we know there will be three pairs of angles, and I don't want to write it over there, I won't have enough room, and the three pairs of sides. So let's start off. Which angles look like they go together? Well, which ones look like they're the same size? Because when we're talking about congruent figures, they need to be the same size. I can tell you my preference is just to go angle A, angle B, angle C, start off by filling in these pieces, and then instead of getting the answer right away, I can look at it and say, almost process of elimination, make sure I know which ones match. When I see this particular one, I see the 90 degrees from angle B and the 90 degrees for angle X, and that tells me right away, 90 degrees should match 90 degrees. I can get that angle very, very quickly. I can get that pair of corresponding angles quickly. From there, you just have to figure out what's another pair. For example, if we're looking up at angle A, which angle, either Z or Y, seems to go with it? Well, A is up at the top. So you might be tempted to say, let's pick the top angle. But take a look at what I just filled in. Look at the sizes of the angle. Do those sizes look like they are the same? No. And since these are congruent shapes, they should be the same. Looking at it, this is one way that we can tell A and Y do not go together. The sizes don't match. But if we look at A and Z, those are sizes that actually do seem to be the same. So that's how we could identify A goes with Z, which of course would force Y to go with the C. And there we go. We have our three pairs of corresponding angles. Next, we need to get the sides. My favorite way of doing these is to start off the same way I did before. AB is a side. Then it connects to BC, which connects over to AC. I like starting with the sides. That way I make sure I get all of them. By tracing out the shape, I can ensure that I don't actually need to repeat something. I don't write anything backwards. I make sure I get all the pieces that I need. Well, from there, I just have to make sure I look over and say, what are the pieces that seem to go together? Which sides are the ones that obviously match up? Now, you might see something differently than me, but when I look at these, I see BC is the shortest side, and it's obvious to me that's the short one. So the short one should match up to the short one. From my brain, that's what I see right away, which will tell me BC needs to match up with, and I could say, XY. You'll note I'm still being careful to match up the angles as well. Up at the top for number two, we had B corresponds to X. When I wrote out number five, I made sure B and X were both in position one, making sure that they match each other. OK, 
Okay, continuing. Um, another piece that I would see when I look at the triangle on the left, since it's a right triangle, I can tell that if we cut across, we'd be able to see the hypotenuse. And I'm using HYP as an abbreviation for hypotenuse. Well, we've got the same thing on the other triangle. Cut across from the right angle, we get the hypotenuse. Well, the hypotenuse needs to match the hypotenuse, so that will give me another pair of sides. AC needs to correspond to ZY. Again, you're noting I'm putting A, to A and Z together because they were matching angles. That will give me my third side, ZX. And we have all our work. Please note, the stuff that we have written in green is just the first part of this problem. Identify the corresponding sides and the corresponding angles. We have not done the second thing we were asked. I'm actually going to leave this problem alone for right now, and we'll come back to it. Because you'll notice this part in the yellow, writing a congruency statement, that's actually the third learning objective. Write a congruency statement. We'll come back to that one in a moment. Before we do, I wanted to look at this example. Which are the pieces that go together? Well, we can go through and say angle M, angle T, angle H corresponds, corresponds, corresponds. And which ones seem to go together? Well, when I look at these, I see that angle T is pretty close to a 90 degree angle. So I'm looking at the other triangle on angle Y, angle R, and angle F, and seeing which one looks like it's close to 90. Angle R does not look close to 90. Angle Y is clearly not 90, but F is pretty close. That's how I can tell that angle T is going to correspond to angle F, because they're both close to 90. That tells me, and I'm going to use my tick marks indicating that they're the same, I'll have my arc saying those are the same sized angle. Well, which other ones need to go together? should be able to see angle M is the same type of size as what looks to me to be angle R. So we'd have M corresponds to angle R, which leaves H with Y. And we have our three angles. One of the things that's nice about getting the angles, we don't need the picture to get the sides. Like on the last one I was looking at saying, well, switch sides match up and short matched short, hypotenuse matched hypotenuse. For this one, we could do it a different way and simply say M, T. You'll note that's position one, position two needs to match position one, position two. So MT will correspond with RF. If we change that so that instead of one, two, we'll slide over and say position two, three matches two, three, we can get TH corresponding with FY. And then we can also wrap around then and say position 1, 3 with 1, 3, which tells us MH corresponds to RY. And there we go. We have our three angles and three sides for the corresponding pairs. Last one for this type. Oh, I want to also point out. We still did not do the congruency statement. We will come back to this congruency statement and do it again. I want to reemphasize these problems that we were doing are based on our second learning objective. 
identify the corresponding parts when we are given congruent figures. You'll note the state, the objective does not say congruent triangles, it says congruent figures. We're not going to restrict ourselves to only things that are three-sided, but we can also have four-sided quadrilaterals, we could have pentagons, we could have hexagons, we can have any congruent figure. Now, just because it gets to be really, really big, we tend to stick with three and four sides, but we don't really have to. Well, let's finish this one up. Do the same piece. Identify the corresponding sides. This is a quadrilateral. So there will be four pairs of angles, and there will be four pairs of sides. Now, we can write this out a lot of different ways. I'm a fan of writing these in the order they're written. B connects to R, connects to U, connects to T, which will wrap back around to the B. Later on, I'll show you why I like to do it this way. It actually has to deal with the congruency statements, but I'll show you if you don't put them in the right order or in an order like this, what might happen and what problem might arise. So, filling in just all these corresponding so I can save some time. Let's go back to our angle. Are there any angles that are just obvious that they have to go together? Well, to me, the most obvious one is how about the angle that caves in on itself? That one should just absolutely leap right out at you. Angle U has to correspond to angle L. Now, from there, you can also see that the angle U is kind of pointing across the middle to angle B, and L is pointing across the middle to angle A. That's another way of looking at it to recognize that B will correspond with A. Well, just by process of elimination, we're down to two pieces that are going to have to wind up going together. So let's take a look and say um, angle R. Angle R is going to match you up to which one? Is that angle M or is it angle N? Well, the way that I see this piece, T is coming down from a longer point or UT is the longer side than UR. So when I'm looking at these other pieces, which is the longer one? L goes to N is longer. L goes to M is shorter. Recognizing that short needs to go to short, that's how I could recognize that R will correspond to M and T will correspond to L. That does not mean that this is the only way to figure them out. There are lots and lots and lots of correct ways to identify the corresponding pairs. I was simply telling you what it is that I saw. You could have seen something entirely different, but as long as you get those four pairs, your strategy was valid. Now let's use these to get our sides. BR will correspond that's position 1, 2 with 1, 2. Sliding down, 2, 3 corresponds 2, 3. 3, 4 goes with 3, 4. And then we get the wraparound, 1, 4 with 1, 4. we finished our objective. We have all four pairs of corresponding sides on the bottom and the corresponding angles at the top. Please note, we still have not done the congruency statement. The congruency statement, I'll remind you, was our third learning objective. And those are fairly straightforward. If we have already done the angles, the congruency statement you basically get for free. You see the order on these going down? That's all we need. Just copy the order. Triangle ABC will not only correspond,
but in this particular instance, we were asked to write a congruency statement, so we should say they're congruent to triangle. Well, we already had the order written down, so we can follow the exact same order from the angles. Z, X, Y. And as long as we had the angles matched correctly, we get the congruency statement basically for free. This part in the purple, just writing this out based on the earlier work, that's all we need to do for our third learning objective. Just write them out in that format. And so with example six, what is our congruency statement? Well, once again, we have the order. We have the order. Just make sure the orders match. Triangle MTH is congruent to triangle RFY. And we're done. When we do our last example, put them in order. And in order. We don't have triangles this time, but we would have the quadrilateral BRUT is congruent to the quadrilateral AMLN, just following the orders. And we're done. We have met our third learning objective. We've written the congruency statement. At this point, this is where I want to backtrack and tell you the piece about that I was warning. I like to put my angles in order, B, R, U, T, because it follows the way I'm drawing the shape. B connects to R, which then goes to U, which then comes down to T and wraps around. The order I've written down the points matches the order it gets drawn. What if I had written these pieces down in a different shape? Sometimes students like to just put them down in whatever order they happen to see first. And that's not necessarily a bad strategy, but it can be a dangerous strategy. Because what if we had seen, whoa, these pieces, oh, I, okay. I was trying to move pieces around on the smart board and I realized something that was not going to work particularly well. Okay, so let me rewrite some of this stuff. How we had one uh, angle B corresponds to angle A. Now I'm pausing for a moment so that I will register that this is something different. It's just the way the smart board works. Angle R corresponds to angle M. Now I'm pausing so that that stuff will stay grouped. Three, angle U corresponds to angle L. And angle T corresponds to angle N. Sorry I needed to rewrite it, but the way the smart board works, I just had to uh, basically rework some pieces. Now, as I was saying, what if you saw these things in a different order? What if the first ones you started with were the ones I felt were obvious and said, that's the one I saw first, so that's the order I'm writing them down. Well, when you get down to this piece, you would still have the correct list of four items. You're absolutely right. All we did is change the order in which they got written, so it does not change the corresponding pairs. But when we go to write the congruency statement, we would have U, B, R, T, is congruent to L, A, M, N. So when we're looking at that, we're saying, well, what's the big deal? We still have the same four pairs. They still all match up just fine. Well, a congruency statement is more than just the matching pairs. Remember, there is a matching order. Position 1, 2, U, B, is talking about side length U, B. And position 1, 2 for LA is talking about side length LA. But if we actually go through and draw in UB, 
and we draw in LA, are we getting side lengths? No. We're getting the diagonal that cuts across the middle of the shape. This is the risk to just putting them in whatever order you see them. Because if you want to just copy the orders down, if you don't intentionally start with putting the order B, R, U, T, or something that connects point to point to point, you might wind up making a mistake and calling this a different shape than it actually is. This says there is a side shape called LA, but there wasn't. That's the risk. Finally finishing all this piece up, we like to remind you, we had three learning objectives. If you are given the congruency statement, can you write out all the pairs of angles and all the pairs of sides? If you're given the shape, can you write up all the pairs of angles and all the pairs of sides? And after writing up the pairs of angles and pairs of sides, can you take the shape and actually turn it into a congruency statement, making sure you get the correct order? If you can do those three things, then you've met the learning objectives for what we had planned today, and you are ready to progress to the next topic.